Welcome to this video tutorial that covers the various aspects of the eCopy ShareScan licensing and activation process. We'll begin with a discussion of ShareScan licensing terminology. First, the license key itself. The license key is a 22 character alphanumeric string that's distributed to users of the ShareScan application. It contains intelligence about the licensed product, for example, ShareScan versus eCopy PDF Pro Office as well as information about the key type it is. A license key is absolutely necessary to associate devices to a ShareScan v5 manager. It also enables purchase connectors and extender functionality within the manager. Several different key types exist. Permanent keys are used by paying customers within their production environments. Evaluation keys are time expiring keys that can be used for trial situations. NFR, or Not for Resale keys, are designed to be used by authorized resellers only in their showroom environments. NFR keys do not expire and provide all of the product functionality. Beta keys are available during product pre-launch cycles to select members of the reseller community for product testing. Beta keys also expire after a designated period of time. Lastly, the Load License Wizard is a tool that administrators can leverage to help them get new licenses into the ShareScan administration console. We'll see this wizard as well as other wizards in action later on in this tutorial. Let's also take a moment to define the difference between two commonly confused terms, activation and registration. These two processes exist for completely separate reasons. Activation is the capturing of license key and hardware ID specifics from the ShareScan SQL system. This information is then passed to the Nuance Activation server. Activating the ShareScan v5 license key ties that license key to the PC that manages the ShareScan v5 database. The activation process can either be done automatically with very little user intervention, or in a more manual way should there not be internet access at the manager PC. Registration is highly recommended as it gives the customer access to a wide range of Nuance customer support services. Some of these services include customer and technical support, RMA services for returning faulty hardware, as well as giving the ability for the customer to download future ShareScan updates and software upgrades, and connectors and extenders that they've purchased. Be sure to get your customers registered at the URL listed on the screen. Here are a few pertinent licensing rules. The license keys, when activated, are bound to the SQL Server Hardware ID. This allows multiple ShareScan managers to share from a pool of licenses that are bound to the SQL Server. Activation rules are different depending on the key type. Permanent and NFR keys are required to be activated within 30 days of being added into the application. Once activated, they can be used indefinitely. The key only needs to be activated once, regardless of how many devices are associated with it. Once the license key is activated, devices can be exchanged to meet the needs of the customer environment without Nuance intervention, as long as the total number of devices is less than or equal to the number of associations allowed by that key. Now that we have a basic understanding of ShareScan licensing, let's walk through the basic steps of getting a license key into the ShareScan application. To do so, we'll use the Load License Wizard. To access the wizard, simply click the Load License button on the licensing window of the Administration Console. As the text states, the wizard guides you through the process of adding new licenses to ShareScan. The wizard needs to communicate with the Nuance Licensing Server in order to validate and download the license file. The top option shown is available when there's a valid internet connection. If there isn't, you can always import the license from a valid LCX file. Let's assume we have an internet connection and we'll attempt to download the licenses automatically. The next screen prompts for the key to be entered in. Once the key is entered, click the Add button. The wizard supports the adding of multiple keys, if necessary. In this case, we'll only show one key being added. Clicking Next will bring you to the Load screen. Clicking the Start key on this screen begins the download process, and shortly thereafter, you can view the results. In this case, we can see the example of an evaluation key file successfully imported from the licensing server. 
Clicking Finish returns you to the licensing window of the admin console. This particular type of key doesn't require activation. But here's another example of what this screen would look like should an NFR key be imported instead. Here you can see that the key is currently in place and can be used, however it's not activated. We learned earlier that we have a grace period of 30 days during which the activation must be performed. Now that we have a key in place, let's take a look at the activation process itself, remembering that there is both an automatic and a manual way of completing this task. Which you choose is dependent on the presence of a valid internet connection. In either case, the process begins the same way, from the licensing screen. Clicking the Activate button launches the Activate License Wizard. Clicking Next brings you to the Hardware ID screen. In most cases, there's nothing to enter on this screen. Your hardware ID is automatically generated and displayed. However, in certain circumstances, you may want to specify a failover server for activation as well. Enabling this feature allows you to either enter the failover SQL Server hardware ID if you know it, or it can be dynamically read from the server by entering in the connection details at the bottom of the screen. In either case, this license key will then be associated with two hardware IDs, your primary and your failover SQL servers. In the event your primary SQL server is not available, you can redirect the ShareScan manager to the failover SQL server and still be compliant from a ShareScan licensing standpoint. There are additional considerations and steps to invoke this type of cutover, so be sure to consult the resource document specified at the end of this tutorial. Since in this example we're not specifying a failover SQL server, we simply click Next. It's at this point that the automatic and manual activation processes start to diverge. If an internet connection was detected, the upper radio button would already be selected and the admin would click Next and a short time later the manager would communicate with the activation server and the license would be activated. We'd like to show here what happens for a manual activation without internet access. Without this type of access, the manager has no way to contact the activation server, so we're forced to use the lower option. Clicking Next brings us to the Specify File Output screen. It's our job to create and upload a zip file manually to the activation server. Using this screen, we can decide on a file name for the zip file, which we'll do now. We would obviously need to copy this file to another PC that does have internet access. We simply navigate to the URL shown on the screen and upload the file following the on-screen prompts. Once the file name is specified, click Next and then Start. This generates the zip file. The zip package contains several important components, such as the LCX license file, and also information about any failover SQL servers if specified. The next stage in the process is to upload this zip package to the activation server. The activation server will digitally sign the zip file and return it to you, where you can then import it into the ShareScan admin console. Let's now walk through the screenshots of that process. We use a web browser on a PC connected to the Internet. We navigate to the activation website URL and click the Browse button to navigate to the zip file we created in the last step. After identifying it, we click the Activate button. You should see a response similar to this one indicating that the server has now logged the license key hardware ID combination. We now download the signed zip package using the button highlighted here. Since we're not on the ShareScan manager itself, we'll have to use some method of transferring this downloaded file, perhaps a thumb drive, to the ShareScan manager. According to the activation server, this key is now activated. Now all we have to do is make sure that the ShareScan manager is brought up to speed. From the licensing screen in the admin console, we click on the Load Activated button, and the Load Activated License window opens. We then click Next, and we use the Browse button to select a file for importing. One thing to watch out for is on the Browse dialog box that appears, you need to set the file type to be appropriate for the file type you're working with. In this case, we have a zip file, so we'll use the drop-down to set the file type accordingly. Once we locate our file, we click the Open option and the file appears in the list on the screen shown. We then click Next and then the Start button to begin the import process. The result screen appears showing a successful import. 
Clicking Finish will then return you to the licensing screen. Now note that our key displays as activated with green check marks next to each feature line item. The application can now be used indefinitely. Similarly, the licensing screen has other wizards for different tasks, although the ones we've shown are the most commonly used. The reactivation wizard is for reactivating keys in the event that the SQL database server hardware was replaced. The license removal wizard provides a mechanism for removing keys from the admin console. An example of this might be at the end of a trial situation. The evaluation key that's in place can be removed and retired and replaced by a permanent one. We've now seen how to add and activate keys in our admin console. Let's wrap up this tutorial with a brief mention of some of the valuable resources to help you further understand ShareScan licensing. We understand that sometimes licensing can be a confusing topic, but hopefully with the addition of all the new licensing wizards and this tutorial, you'll have a better understanding of the processes involved to get your ShareScan manager fully operational. Be sure to check out the Engage website for a variety of licensing and failover server related documentation. As always, we also recommend you view the other ShareScan video tutorials on the Nuance Imaging YouTube channel. These brief videos highlight important aspects of ShareScan installation, configuration, and diagnostics.